Roundabouts are good at keeping cars moving when traffic from adjoining roads intersect, but they're also very good at making drivers, particularly new drivers, feel anxious and stressed. Firstly, let's look at why we have roundabouts. Here we have four roads all heading for the same point. If there was no system, there would be chaos. They could add give way lines to two of the roads and give priority to the main road. But this is hardly fair for the cars that need to give way. They could also put traffic lights up, but then you'd have to wait even when the road is empty. But as this is the UK, generally the junction of choice is the roundabout. These are great at keeping traffic moving when it's both busy and not busy. Now let's look at how a basic roundabout works. Unless road signs or markings state otherwise, anyone approaching the roundabout has to give way to cars already on the roundabout. As everyone in the UK drives around roundabouts in a clockwise direction, you will always need to give way to the right before you enter the roundabout. Once you cross the give way line at the roundabout, you no longer need to give way. You can continue around the roundabout until you get to your exit. Very occasionally though, you will need to give way whilst you're on the roundabout. This is very rare and there will be clear road signs and markings to make you aware that you need to do this. When you approach a roundabout, you will firstly see a roundabout warning sign. This sign should be far enough back to give you time to slow down and stop before the roundabout. If you are going left at a roundabout, you signal left on approach and take the first exit. If you are taking an intermediate exit, which is up to and including 12 o'clock, you don't signal on approach, but signal left once you have passed the penultimate exit. In case you are not sure, penultimate exit basically means the exit before the one you are taking. If your exit is to the right, right being past 12 o'clock, you should signal right on approach, go around the roundabout and signal left as you pass the penultimate exit. All seems fairly straightforward at the moment. So what's all the fuss about when it comes to roundabouts? Some roundabouts have two or more lanes. Knowing which one to use isn't always straightforward, especially when you have a roundabout with three or four lanes. Anyway, we will get back to how to deal with all these lanes soon, because there is actually another problem that roundabouts challenge us with. One of the main sticking points for learning roundabouts for most people is judging whether or not they should go when they reach the give way line. If a roundabout is empty, it's easy. You can just go. But if there is a car already on the roundabout, you need to judge if you can go without making them break. If you pull out in front of someone close enough that you make them break, you are likely to fail the driving test. So you need to be good at judging if you have time to pull out without making anyone break. Your driving instructor can't really help you much with this because it takes mainly time and practice to improve your skill. However, there are a few tips I could give you. If the car is on the other side of the roundabout, you are unlikely to make them break and therefore you can go. If you feel they are close enough that you may need to wait, try to figure out which way they are going. If they are going to leave the roundabout, you can go. But if they are coming round the roundabout to pass you, you should wait. You should be trying to use their signals, their position and their speed to help you judge if they're going to come round the roundabout or leave before they get to you. Are they signalling left to take the exit before you or are they signalling right to come round? Are they positioned near the roundabout, in which case they're likely coming round, or away from the roundabout, which normally means they're leaving? Are they accelerating? Most drivers stay the same speed as they go round the roundabout, but accelerate when they leave. Now you're probably thinking, and quite rightly so too, that what if the driver doesn't signal? It is quite common for people not to signal and it's one of the challenges of driving. It's quite common actually for drivers to leave their right indicator on as they leave the roundabout. This is frustrating because you wait for them to come round and they don't come round. Why would they do this? I don't really know. I think it might be a combination of just being a bit lazy, a bit selfish. Either way, the fact remains a significant proportion of drivers don't use their signals correctly, if at all. So it's up to you to use their position and speed to help you judge which way they're going. However, if you're not sure where they're going, 
it's best to wait. And if you're not sure where they're going, your driving examiner probably isn't sure either. So they would also appreciate it if you wait, if it looks like someone's coming round, or it's hard to tell if they're coming round. It's important for you to remember that as a learner driver, you're gonna need bigger opportunities than most other drivers. Don't feel you need to take the small opportunities that you see your peers or your elders take. Take the ones you feel confident with. Your judgment will get better with years of practice. And remember, your driving examiner doesn't expect you to take the small opportunities that they themselves may take. Anyway, moving on, what about these pesky lanes? On a two lane roundabout, unless road markings or signs state otherwise, use the left lane to go left and use the left lane to take any exits that are up to and including 12 o'clock. Use the right lane for taking any exits that are after 12 o'clock on the roundabout. On some roundabouts, the roundabout itself doesn't exactly tally up with the sign. In this case, it's important to use the sign to help you judge which lane you need. Don't use the roundabout. So if the exit you need looks like it's past 12 o'clock in real life, look at the sign. And if the sign says it is 12 o'clock, then use the left lane. When you are on a roundabout with more than one lane, it's important to keep to your lane so that other vehicles can use the roundabout at the same time as you. If you do what is known as straight line the roundabout, you are likely to cut someone up, which isn't going to make them very best pleased with you. For three lane roundabouts, use the left lane to go left, the middle lane to go ahead, and the right lane to go right. Unfortunately, the UK's roads are far too complicated to make all of the roundabouts the same. So on occasion, you may need to use a different lane to the advice you're getting from this video. Here is a good rule of thumb for lane choice on multi-lane roundabouts. If you're taking the first exit, use the first lane. The second exit, use the second lane. The third exit, use the third lane. And of course, the fourth for the fourth, etc. But this is only a guide for where you need to be, not a rule. So make sure you're on the lookout for signs and plan your journey so you know which roads you're going to use. For example, if you know you're going to be traveling south on the M25 and you find a sign that has M25S written on it, then you know you need to follow this sign. It can also be fun trying to leave roundabouts with multiple lanes. If your roundabout has one or two lanes, Leaving is normally straightforward, but when your roundabout has three or more lanes, you can sometimes run into the problem of being too far away from your exit when you want to leave. On roundabouts with three or more lanes, you will generally move one lane to the left every time you pass an exit. Here you can see a car starts in lane three to take exit three. As it passes exit one, it will go down to lane two. As it passes exit two, it will then go down to lane one, ready to leave at exit three. This kind of multi-lane roundabout is known as a spur roundabout because you start on the right and you gradually make your way to the left to leave. A bit like the way a spiral starts in the middle and it gets further and further out as you go round. It goes without saying to make sure it's safe before you change lane on a roundabout. People should not be passing you on the left when you want to change to the left lane, but make sure you check your mirrors just in case they are. It's important to remember that the advice I'm giving you in this video is not conclusive. In fact, the term spiral roundabout isn't even official. It's just a term us driving instructors use to help people understand how big multi-lane roundabouts work. The fact is, you never quite know what lane you're supposed to use unless you know the area or you find the road signs or markings to tell you where to go. If they is no road signs or markings, follow my guide and you won't be too far wrong. If you find yourself in the wrong lane and you need to change lane to take the exit you wish, make sure you change lane safely. Don't cut people up. It's better to go round the roundabout again 
or if you can't do that, to take the wrong exit that the lane you're in makes you take, it's better to do that than it is to drive in front of somebody and possibly cause an accident. I myself can go the wrong way when I'm on a big roundabout that I haven't used before uh, with lots of road signs that I haven't had time to read. But I'd rather go the wrong way and be safe than to cut someone up and be dangerous. Also, if you go the wrong way on your driving test, that is not a serious mark, so you should not fail as long as you're safe. Some roundabouts have traffic lights on them. These work in much the same way as normal roundabouts. Just make sure you stop at any red lights you come across. If you have traffic lights as you enter the roundabout, then you no longer need to give way to the right. Just wait at the red light when it's red and proceed when it's green. You don't need to be looking to the right to give way. Some roundabouts have filter lanes for people who are turning left. As you can see on the sign, this diagonal line misses the roundabout, and therefore, if you stay in the left lane, you should be able to continue without giving way to the roundabout. You'll normally have these hatched lines or a physical barrier separating you from the traffic using the roundabout. It's very important you or others on the roundabout don't cross these lines or a collision is likely. Some roundabout signs have a thicker line on one or more of the exits. This means the exit is a major route where most of the traffic will be going. Sometimes there will be more than two lanes taking this particular route, as is the case on this roundabout in Colchester. This is because it doesn't make sense for everybody to be using one lane when most of the traffic is taking the same exit. Therefore, on this particular roundabout, you can actually use both the left and the right lane to go right. So you're using the left lane to turn right on the roundabout. That's very unusual. If you are unsure of this rule on this particular roundabout, it's best to use the right lane until you know the area better. That's all for this one. Please subscribe to get my future videos and please comment for any improvements I can make or any new videos you want to see in the future.